When a fluid, such as water, is in motion, the flow can be characterized in one of two ways. We can have laminar flow, where every particle of fluid or molecule of fluid follows the same smooth path every single time. And therefore, the flow of these particles in an area of laminar flow is predictable. Contrast to this is a regular or turbulent flow, where the fluid particles move unpredictably and collide and mix together. So laminar flow is much easier to model due to its predictable motion and turbulent flow is extremely chaotic and unpredictable. Now, we're going to introduce the ideal fluid model, which greatly simplifies our study of fluid dynamics. And it allows us to do this without needing to consider complexities such as heat conduction, drag, viscosity and so on. So what is an ideal fluid? An ideal fluid has these properties. So an ideal fluid is incompressible. In other words, the molecules that make up the fluid cannot be pushed closer together. This also means the fluid's density is constant. And remember, density is mass over volume. An ideal fluid also has zero viscosity. It's non-viscous, and viscosity simply refers to the amount of internal friction within the fluid. So for example, honey has a higher viscosity than water, and therefore flows more slowly. When a viscous fluid flows, part of the kinetic energy of the molecules in the fluid is transformed into internal energy due to this internal friction. But an ideal fluid has zero viscosity, which means the molecules slide effortlessly past one another without losing kinetic energy to heat in the process. And lastly, ideal fluids also have a steady flow, which means that the velocity, the density and the pressure at each point in the fluid remains constant. So let's imagine now we have a length of pipe where water enters here on the left hand side at one meters per second, but exits on the right hand side at a different speed. Now the pipe at the center narrows down to one quarter of its original diameter. With this information, what is the velocity of the water exiting the pipe? And we're gonna treat the water as an ideal fluid. Now to solve questions like these, we need to make use of the continuity equation, where the flow rate of water entering the pipe on the left hand side is equal to the flow rate of water leaving the pipe on the right hand side. So we know the velocity of the fluid entering the pipe. V1 is equal to one meters per second. And because the pipe narrows down to a quarter of the original diameter, this also means that the radius also narrows down by the same amount. So if we rearrange the continuity equation above to make V2 the subject of the equation, we get the ratio of the areas of the pipe multiplied by the velocity of the water entering the pipe. Now we know the area of a circle is pi r squared. So we can cancel out the pi terms here. And remember the radius of the smaller pipe is a quarter of the radius of the larger pipe. So a quarter squared is one over 16. And we can multiply by the reciprocal here to get rid of the fraction in the denominator We can cancel out the radius terms now, and we end up with the V2 term being equal to 16 times V1. And V1 is equal to one meters per second. So the velocity of the water exiting the pipe 
is 16 meters per second. It's also important to notice that the product AV has units of volume per unit time. And this is because the velocity is a measure of distance per unit time. And this cross section area here multiplied by this change in distance is a volume. And we call this the flow rate. So the continuity equation is saying that no matter where the water is along a pipe of varying diameter, the flow rate remains constant for an ideal fluid. So what about the fluid pressure along this length of pipe? How does it vary? So according to Bernoulli's principle, the pressure in a fluid decreases as the fluid's velocity increases. So let's look at the pipe again. According to our continuity equation, we know that as the pipe narrows, the velocity of the fluid must increase to keep the flow rate the same. So given this information, what section of this pipe will have the highest water pressure and what section will have the lowest water pressure? So the right hand side will have the lowest water pressure because the water is moving faster in this section of the pipe. And the left hand side will have the highest pressure because the water velocity is at its lowest. It is in fact this pressure difference that causes the water to accelerate as it enters the narrow part of the pipe. And therefore the water's velocity increases.